work. Glenn Shadeen is a professor of nuclear engineering at Georgia Tech University. He joins us via Skype from Texas to break down all of this for us. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning. How did this go from a, a situation where they felt they were at least going to be able to get a handle on this, uh, find some uh, productive backup system to continue to cool, to what we're talking about today, which is uh, the, the leak of at least some amount of radiation from one of these uh, reactors? Well, I, I got to tell you, things have dramatically changed in the last several days. Initially, um, you know, they were recording just slightly elevated radiation levels at the site boundary because they were venting uh, uh, small pups from the building to relieve pressure, and that, that was very short-lived nuclides that, that decayed uh, you know, pretty fast as they were uh, vented out of the plant. So levels were extremely low. Uh, this is a very different situation. Uh, we have uh, some fraction of the core has melted, um, releasing some fission products uh, to the atmosphere uh, as they're as they're relieving pressure in this system. Uh, it's very very much more grave situation. Right, and the radiation levels they're recording uh, they're pretty significant. And Glenn, no let question. me ask you about this. So you say, is this uncharted territory, or uh, is there a plan uh, moving forward? Has have they come back from this brink before? To my knowledge, I don't think we've pushed uh, pushed a plant this hard. Uh, there's been tests, you know, there've been tests done on individual fuel elements and things where we've, you know, uh, pushed them hard and, and tested a lot of heat transfer and other things over the years. But uh, this is uh, pretty much for this reactor uh, or these series of reactors uh, uncharted territory. Glenn, you um, talked about a significant this is not release of nuclear. This is not something I like to see. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, right. I'm very upset about what I'm seeing just because, um, you know, it, it's uh, very unfortunate. And I, and I know they're doing everything they can. And Glenn, um, I think your perspective is, is reflected by a lot of the nuclear physicists we've talked to and, and experts who've said they started cautious and now they're, <clears throat> excuse me, they're getting more concerned. You said a significant amount of, of radioactive material. I mean, what do you think is coming out of that plant? Uh, well, and you have fuel failures, you're going to have uh, uh, reach of uh, the uh, fuel rods and you're going to have uh, noble gases, uh, iodine-131, cesium-137 are the main principal uh, volatilized components that are going to be uh, vented and the fact that the radiation levels between the buildings, uh, I was looking at some of the reports, some of those radiation levels are quite high and the only thing that that can come from is uh, having fission products and other things being vented uh, from the from the building. Uh, it's unfortunate that that is occurring, but uh, there, that indicates that there has definitely been some level of melting and breach of primary containment, which is, uh, uh, you know, the fuel element itself has been uh, compromised in several of those assemblies or many of those assemblies. I don't know what level. Um, based on the levels that I see of radiation, uh, it's very difficult sitting here armchairing it from many thousands of miles away, uh, not being there on the ground. But I can tell you that based on my experience, I believe that um, only partial melting has occurred because the radiation levels, if it were total melting, would be significantly higher. But these are radiation levels, Glenn, to hurt, that, will, that will hurt people. I mean, you're very concerned about this being in the atmosphere and where it goes from here. Um, well, I can tell you as far as I'm, I'm really concerned for the people at the plant because okay. the levels at the plant are very high. Uh, they're accumulating some significant dust there. Now, radiation workers themselves uh, already accumulate uh, many times what the average population does as a result of their job, and radiation workers accept that, and actually it's deemed to be a safe level, but you're accumulating these uh, now at rates where it's going to okay. start impacting even even the workers, I think, over prolonged periods. Uh, as far as atmospheric transport goes, typically most of the most of the uh, uh, if there are any uh, solids ejected out, uh, aerosolized, whatever, what have you, most of those I believe would fall within the first two to three kilometers okay. of the. Plant.
downwind. So it's going to be immediate in the immediate zones around the plant. And we know that's where they've have. evacuated even beyond that kind of a level, probably um, because they're watching those same sorts of um, uh, same sorts of trajectories. Glenn Shadeen, thank you so much, nuclear engineering prof professor, Georgia Tech um, College Station, Texas.